can't find the Butterman. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the door in the fridge, Eddie. No one wants to be Peter Chris Lois, not even Peter Chris. What's going on, everybody? This is Trend Kill Radio, a rock news show about all things rock except for when it's not. Brought to you by Aquanet and Dirty Flannels. I'm your host, Sean Ryan. And I am Jimothy. Eddie Vedder uh, is talking a lot of shit on my boys in Motley Crue, and you know what? I got something to say about it, so let's just get it started. Well, I mean, before we even get into that, Eddie Vedder, he's got a new solo album coming out, and as most musicians or movie stars do, like Christian Bale when he had that whole fucking freak out before the release of Terminator Salvation. Oh! Oh, good for you! And how was it? Kanye doing every fucking stupid thing that you could possibly think of before any album he releases. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's yeah, just no. it's what you do in entertainment. Right, yeah, no one gives a shit that you're actually making art, but if you start talking shit or do something crazy before you release something, then maybe, maybe you'll sell some albums because people remember who you were. Yeah, and Eddie Vedder is coming out with his solo album that no one asked for uh, today, February 11th. Oh, there you go. So, today uh, there was an update uh, because just a few weeks ago, Eddie was talking to the New York Times and he was talking shit about 80s hair metal and exclusively Motley Crue. And the iconic classic, Girls, Girls, Girls. (laughs) Son of a bitch. Eddie was going on about how much he just despised the whole 80s hair metal scene. He goes on to say, quote, I used to work in San Diego loading gear at a club. I'd end up being at shows that I wouldn't have chosen to go to. Bands that monopolize late 80s MTV. The metal bands, and I'm trying to be nice, I despise. Girls, 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 and Motley Crue, fuck you. I hated it. I hated how it made the fellas look. I hated how it made women look. It felt so vacuous. Guns N' Roses came out, and thank God, at least had some teeth. But I'm circling back to say one thing that I appreciated was that in Seattle and the alternative crowd, the girls could wear combat boots and sweaters, and their hair looked more like Cat Powers. Who the fuck is that? And not Heather Locklear's. Nothing against her. Yeah. Eddie Vedder went on to say, quote, They weren't selling themselves short. They could have an opinion and be respected. I think that's a change that lasted. It sounds so trite. But before then, it was Bustiers. The only person who wore a Bustier in the 90s that I could appreciate, Jane's Addiction singer Perry Farrell. (laughs) And Perry, yeah, like, I fucking love Perry Farrell. He could totally do that. He wore chicks clothing all the time. And you know what? In the article, I don't know if it was actually Eddie that said this, but, you know, they kind of lumped him in with a grunge crowd and Jane's Addiction was never really grunge they were just like we are here to do a lot of drugs and be weird yeah and it was fantastic yes I mean they did it wasn't like exclusively heroin like Seattle or something like that or Motley Crue's cocaine and heroin this was we're gonna do everything (laughs) because music is art and we're just gonna be we're just gonna fucking make it so right. and like, that's that's our muse is drugs right. <laughs> well, i think every every major popularized genre has like everybody that's doing the formula and then you've got like one or two of those people that are just gonna be like well yeah kind of but no n- <laughs> not at all <laughs> okay so long story short nikki six heard this of course, it made its rounds to Twitter. Nikki goes on to say, quote, Made me laugh today reading how much the singer in Pearl Jam hated Motley Crue. Now, considering that they're one of the most boring rock bands in history, it's kind of a compliment, isn't it? And they have a stadium tour to kind of prove their point. You know, they're headlining, then they got Poison, they got Def Leppard, they got Joan Jett. And, you know, that's worthy of stadium. Absolutely. That, it's stadium rock. Yeah. And despite, oh man, and I'm, I'm sorry, like I, I'm, I'm favoring Motley Crue because I grew up with them, but uh, Vince, <laughs> say a prayer for this guy, <laughs> light a candle, pray to your God, <laughs> do something, else. some voodoo spell, please, for the love of God, because Vince, man. Maybe, maybe get on a treadmill for like 15 minutes a day. <laughs> uh, go to a vocal coach. Stop just pounding bottles of liquor, eating McDonald's, falling off stages and breaking ribs. McRibs. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) 
And then Eddie shot back and he goes, we love our board fans. And there's a video on Twitter, which hopefully I can find right here. And that... Man, that song, I, I turned it, it was 40 seconds long, but I turned it off at uh, 25, because that music really, I hate Pearl Jam, I'm sorry, dude. I, I, out of the big four, I am so sad that we're left with Eddie Vedder and Pearl Jam. All right. And if you even want to say big six, like including Smashing Pumpkins from Chicago and Stuntable Pilots from San Diego. Did you listen to new Smashing Pumpkins? No. I don't think anyone should like it, but I did. <laughs> it's not bad. It's just their stage show is boring. I went and saw them a few years ago. Billy Corgan is just a Uncle Fester just standing there. The, my favorite thing sad. in recent years is you ever see that video clip? Eddie Vedder just keeps on poking the bear. He just brought it up again for no reason after we thought this all just kind of fizzled out. Uh, he brings it up again on stage while he's performing with his solo act, including Chad Smith, very respectable drummer from Red Hot Chili Peppers, which I'm sure wants nothing to do with this. <laughs> but he goes and says this, Jim. Quoted to say, that drum kit, that silver, beautiful machine that he is the engine of, does not need to elevate or rotate to do his job. Let me point that out. So, clearly, calling out the iconic Tommy Lee drum kit that would go on stage. and I mean, it's a fucking spec. It's a show. Yeah. It's, just, it's, a, it's an amazing spectacle. <laughs> and Tommy Lee does not absolutely need that kit to do all that to be cool. He just does it because it is fucking cool and he's there to entertain you, not just play the drums. Yeah, Tommy Lee's like a larger than life personality. He like he's like a lead singer kind of personality where he just doesn't want to just sit behind the drum kit and be forgotten about. And he's done a very good job of that throughout his history. Absolutely. Uh, you know, whether it be sex tapes or uh, riding roller coasters on with drums on with fans on that so yeah like it's it's for the fans motley crew is a show it's not just eddie vetter going i know you know what i talked to eddie vetter recently and i asked him for a quote about this and he went end quote can't find the butterman it's in the door in the fridge eddie oh <laughs> you know what? I don't know if this is going to make it, but I just want to tell a quick story. My old drummer, Brendan, uh, that has passed uh, a few years ago, he was a big grunge fan and stuff like that. And he didn't mind Motley Crue. He just didn't really like care about him. So this chick that I was hooking up with, she worked at Blossom. She texts me and she goes, hey, I got VIP tickets. Like, if you want, come on up for the show. So we go. And Brendan has a blast. Like, he's never seen anything like this where people are actually excited. And the pyro and the lighting and, like, all the theatrics that they do during Motley Crue shows, or at least they used to. Um, and it was just so mind-blowing to him. And then he, I ended up hanging out with some other friends, and he disappeared for a while. And then we uh, re-met up so I could drive him back home. And I was like, where were you? He's like, oh, I met up with some chick and we went out to the parking lot and I fucked her in her car. <laughs> and I was like, that's a Motley Crue show. There you go. He goes, it, it blew his mind because it was just so wild. Like, that's the kind of energy. You don't get that with Pearl Jam. So fuck right. you, Eddie Vedder. That is the end of the episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to subscribe, hit your notifications, like the episode, follow us on Tranquil Radio 216 at Facebook and Instagram. And uh, that's it. I'm Sean Ryan. And I'm Jimothy. Later. This is Trend Kill Radio. I lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> if I could say a few words, I'd be a better public speaker. <laughs>